The history may repeat itself, but the legacy and remnants of iconic ancient art will remain timeless. This time, let's have the ancient art grade 9 first quarter. First, we have here the objectives. Identify the famous art in the prehistoric period. Created an artwork related to ancient art. Valued ancient art in the present day. Next is the content standard. To content standard, art elements and processes by synthesizing and applying prior knowledge and skills. The arts as integral to the development of organization, spiritual belief, historical events, scientific discoveries, natural disaster or occurrences, and other external phenomena. Together with the objectives and content standard, learning competencies is also important. So first, we have use artworks to derive the traditions, history of an art period. Second, identify distinct characteristics of arts during the different art periods. Lastly, Compare the characteristics of artworks produced in the different art periods. There was a time when no written language had been created by humans. Various artistic forms were used as a useful means of communication between themselves and other cultures throughout this time. Let's begin this by presenting the prehistoric art. The prehistoric art includes artwork produced during the Stone Age, Paleolithic, and Neolithic eras. For your better understanding, prehistoric art could be defined as art that was created by people in an era where any form of written language had yet not been developed. The time in which various cultures throughout human history started developing their unique language systems varies greatly from region to region. Before living historians a written record of daily events, prehistoric artists left a treasure trove of information behind through their prehistoric artifacts and prehistoric drawings. Prehistoric artists recorded their daily experiences in mediums that have managed to make it through centuries of harsh exposure to changing environmental conditions, giving us detailed insights into what life was like in the earliest days of our species before the development of a written form of communication. With the complexity to prehistoric art, let's take a look with what techniques and methods were used in early prehist prehistory art. As with any era, artists that created prehistory art were limited by the resources available to them at the time they lived. The very first art was made from tools and canvases readily accessible to them such as cave walls, bones, and pigments such as okra and burnt wood. Not only did they use various pigments to paint on surfaces, but also carved images on bone stone and walls as well as made various pieces of clay sculpture and pottery from available materials in the region paintings from the prehistoric era paintings during the prehistoric era were found inside caves which may have been the prehistoric people's way of communicating with each other it may also be for religious or ceremonial these symbols for these people paintings may be considered more an artifact of archaeological evidence than a true picture of humans' first created art. Prehistoric drawings of animals were usually correct in proportion. So, three periods of prehistoric art. So the art period is a longer period of time that encompasses many different artists and their artistic musical, theatrical, and literary works. Several art movements with a common emphasis or objective usually make up an art period. So, there are three periods, namely 
Paleolithic Era or the Old Stone, Mesolithic Era or the Middle Stone Age, and the Neolithic, the New Stone Age. First, we have here the Paleolithic Era or the Old Stone. So the Paleolithic period is an ancient cultural stage of human technological development characterized by the creation and use of rudimentary chipped stone tools. So these included simple pebble tools or a rock shaped by the pounding of another stone to produce tools with a serrated crust that served as a chopping blade. Hand adzes are tools that shaped from a block of stone to create a rounded butt and a single bevel straight or curved cutting edge. We also have stone scrapers, clevers, and points. So such tools were also made of bone and wood. The picture attached is one of the examples of Paleolithic art. The Paleolithic period was also characterized by the manufacture of small sculptures. Example given is carved stone statuettes of women, clay figurines of animals, and other bone and ivory carvings, and paintings, incised designs, and reliefs on cave walls. To discuss these, let's move to the notable Paleolithic arts or the Old Stone. We recognized that molds are modern arts today. To begin with, we have here stone tools. Stone tools of the Achillean industry used by Homo erectus and early modern humans and of the Mosterian industry used by Neanderthals. These were basically stone cores with flakes removed from them to create a sharpened edge that could be used for cutting chopping or scraping. As you can see in the picture above, these are the stone tools in Paleolithic era. In the right side next to stone tools is the Venus of Dolni Vistonis, a ceramic Venus figurine found at a Paleolithic site in the Moravian Basin south of Burna. So is together with a few others from nearby locations. So the oldest known ceramic in the world, predating the use of fired clay to make pottery. The figure was discovered on July 13, 1925 in a layer of ash broken into two pieces. After Paleolithic, let's proceed to the Mesolithic era or the Middle Stone. So the period between the Paleolithic Age and the Neolithic Age is known as the Mesolithic period. The years attributed to this period vary from the region to region, but it roughly corresponds to the time in Northern Europe, during which the climate began to warm and the glaciers to recede. Some characteristics of the Mesolithic Age are a transition from large, chipped stone tools and hunting in group of large herd animals to smaller or the microliths cheap stone tools and a more hunter-gatherer culture here are the notable mesolithic arts first on the list we have the back edge bladelet so Mesolithic tools were generally composite devices manufactured with small chipped, small stone tools called microliths and retouched bladelets. Next to that is the Man of Bicorp. So this ancient rock painting is the oldest evidence of humans' love affair with honey. It was found among other paintings of important facets of life, such as hunting and ceremonial dancing, showing just how culturally significant bees were at the time. Studies have shown that the peoples in the Bicorp area are the time were typically nomadic hunter-gatherers, unable to cultivate cereals that in other cultures of the time were the base carbohydrate in many diets. 
Finally, for the Mesolithic arts is the Dance of Kugel. The painting known as the Dancers of Kugel is a good example of the depiction of movement in static art. In this scene, nine women are depicted, something new in the art of this region, some painted in black and others in red. They are shown dancing around a male figure with an abnormally large phallus, a figure that was rare if not absent in Paleolithic art. Along with humans, several animals including a dead deer or buck impaled by an arrow or at altal are depicted. Down to the last period, the Neolithic era. So the Neolithic period, also called the New Stone Age, is the final stage of cultural evolution or technological development among prehistoric humans. The stage is characterized by stone tools shaped by polishing or grinding, dependence on domesticated plants or animals, settlement in permanent villages, and the appearance of such crafts as pottery and weaving. In this stage, humans were no longer dependent on hunting, fishing, and gathering wild plants. Under Neolithic era, we have here the classical art. So when we say classical art or classism, refers to artwork that draws inspiration from ancient Roman or ancient Greek culture, architecture, literature, and art. So classism was most popular in Western art during the Renaissance period and often depicted scenes from mythology through painting, sculpture, and printmaking. So let's explore the notable classical artworks. So we have here Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve is the engraving of Adam and Eve of 1504 by the German Renaissance artist Albert Dürer, so recast this familiar story with nuances of meaning and artistic innovation. In the picture, Adam and Eve stand together in a dense, dark forest, far from the garden evoked in Genesis. So this forest is distinctly German, the dark woods of the devils and the spooks of Grimm's fairy tales. We also have here the Oath of the Horati, so a more rigorously neoclassical painting style arose in France in the 1780s under the leadership of Jack Louis David. The painting depicts a scene from a Roman legend about the 7th century BC dispute between two warring cities, the Rome and the Alba Longa, and stresses the importance of patriotism and masculine self-sacrifice for one's country. Next, we have Pylades and Orestes brought as victims before Iphigenia. So in the passage depicted by West Iphigenia, a priestess of Diana stands in judgment before the semi-naked figures of her brother Orestes in the red drapery and his cousin and companion Pelades, who are brought before her, bound by the shepherd or sander who had previously reported their capture. Let's continue our lesson with Egyptian art. Egyptian art is known for its symbolic, stylized, and use of myriad of media to vividly express their belief systems, wealth, power, and dedication to history and to life after death. Glory to their gods and the recording of national events and victories were paramount to the purpose of their art. Paintings from Ancient Egypt The purpose of Egyptian paintings is to make the deceased person's afterlife place pleasant. With this in mind, 
Themes include journey to the underworld or the presentation of the deceased to the gods of the underworld by their protective deities. It emphasizes the importance of life after death and the preservation of the knowledge of the past. Most paintings were highly stylized and symbolic and show profile view of animals or people. The dominant colors used were red, black, blue, gold, and green derived from mineral pigments that can withstand strong sunlight without fading. Paintings from sarcophagus of Tutankhamen, 18th dynasty, 1362 AD to 1253 BC. The paintings on the walls on the tomb show events of the life of the king while he was still on earth and the scenes he expects to encounter in the underworld after his death. The Book of the Dead The Book of the Dead is an ancient script that contains text on how to bring back the dead in the afterlife. This book consists of a number of magical spells that are supposedly used to assist a dead person's journey through the underworld once they have died and been resurrected into the afterlife. The earliest of the spells and manuscripts date back to 3000 BC and the newer spells were added later in Egyptian history, most recently during the 11th to 7th centuries BC. Mummification in Ancient Egypt Mummification was an important part of the concept of an afterlife. A proper ritual had to be followed to mummify a dead person to ensure his or her resurrection after receiving judgment from the Egyptian gods. Before the Old Kingdom, the earliest of the Egyptian civilizations, bodies which were buried in the desert were naturally preserved by desiccation, but as time passed, wealthier Egyptians started to arrange for more elaborate artificial mummification. Now let's proceed to Greek art. Greek art is all about images. Images of gods, images of heroes, and images of humans. The self-awareness of the Greeks is reflected in the ways they decided to visualize themselves and the world, both real and imaginary, surrounding them. Ancient Greek art emphasized the importance and accomplishments of human beings. Even though much of Greek art was meant to honor the gods, those very gods were created in the image of humans. Much artwork was government-sponsored and intended for public display. Paintings from Classical Greek Era Painting from Classical Greek Era Painting from the Classical Greek Era were most commonly found in vases, panels, and tombs. It depicts natural figures with dynamic compositions. Most of the subjects were battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes. It reveals a grasp of linear perspective and naturalist representation. Most common methods of Greek painting is fresco, method of painting water-based pigments usually on a wall surfaces. Another one is encaustic, developed to be used by Greek shipbuilders who use the hot wax to fill the cracks of the ship. Soon pigments or colors was added and used to paint a wax hull. Notable Greek artwork. Judgment of Paris. Painted in a period around 1632 to 1635, Peter Paul Rubens depicts the classic story of Greek mythology, The Judgment of Paris. Zeus has decided that the Trojan prince Paris will decide which of the three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, is the most beautiful and therefore worthy of the golden apple? The Siren Vase In Homer's Odyssey, one of the founding epics of Greek literature, Odysseus, longs to hear the seductive yet dangerous song of the sirens that lure sailors to their deaths. So all his crew plug their ears, 
and Odysseus has himself lashed to the mast. This powerful painting captures the tension as Odysseus strains at his bonds, his whole body agonized, his head raised and wrapped listening. One among the notable Greek artwork is Goddesses from the East Pediment of the Parthenon. Sitting and reclining in graceful unison, these goddesses carved in marble for the Parthenon in Athens are among the most beautiful and mysterious images of the human form ever created. Incredibly, the artist makes the draperies that cover their bodies as real and richly textured as similar garments painted by Leonardo da Vinci a millennium later. And who didn't have to produce his illusions in stone? These are dream goddesses. Now let's proceed to Roman art. The greatest points of distinction for Roman art are its very diversity. The embracing of art trends past and present from every corner of the empire, and the promotion of art to such an extent that it became more widely produced and more easily available than ever before. Roman artists copied, imitated, and innovated to produce art on a grand scale, sometimes compromising quality but on other occasions far exceeding the craftsmanship of their predecessors. Achievements of Roman Art Any material was fair game to be turned into objects of art. Recording historical events without a clutter of symbolism and mythological metaphor became an obsession. Immortalizing an individual private patron in art was a common artist commission. Painting is aimed at faithfully capturing landscapes, townscapes, and the more trivial subjects of daily life. Realism became the ideal and the cultivation of knowledge, and appreciation of art itself became a worthy goal. Romans produced art. The Romans produced art in a vast array of forms. Seal cutting, jewelry, glassware, mosaics, pottery, frescoes, statues, monumental architecture, and even epigraphy and coins were all used to beautify the Roman world as well as to convey meaning from military prowess to fashions and aesthetics. Let us now proceed to the notable Roman art. Portrait of the Four Tetrarchs Portrait of the Four Tetrarchs is a porphyry sculpture produced around 300 AD. The sculpture consists of a group of four Roman emperors. The sculpture can be viewed at St. Mark's Basilica in Venice in Italy. Alexander Mosaic One of the famous Roman paintings, Alexander Mosaic is a Roman floor mosaic developed around 100 BC. This painting depicts a battle between Alexander the Great and Darius III of Persia. It can be viewed at the National Archaeological Museum in Naples. Portland Vase Portland Vase is a Roman camel glass vase produced around 1 to 25 AD. This piece is known as the Basque Roman camel glass which can be viewed at the British Museum in London. The glass vase is about 25 cm in height and 56 cm in circumference. So let us now talk about medieval art. Medieval art, which includes a wide variety of art and architecture, refers to a period also known as the Middle Ages which roughly spanned from the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD to the early stages of Renaissance in the 40th century. Work produced during this era emerged from the artistic heritage of the Roman Empire and the iconographic style of the early Christian Church, fused with the barbarian culture of Northern Europe. Byzantine 
Byzantine art from 40th to 50th century CE is generally characterized by a move away from the naturalism of the classical tradition towards the more abstract and universal. There is a definite preference for two-dimensional representations and those artworks which contain a religious message predominate. Tree of Jesse Tree of Jesse, illuminated page from Babanus Morus the Lodibus Sacte Crucis Ancient mid 12th century in the Municipal Library of Dewey, France. Saints Boris and Gleb. Saints Boris and Gleb, icon by a follower of Prokopishirin, Stroganov School, 7th century in the state Tretakov Gallery, Moscow. Byzantine gold earring with animal bird, 12th century in the British Museum, London. This earring show the skill and the quality achieved by Byzantine jewelers. They come from a treasure of 36 pieces found in Egypt. The treasure is shared between museums in London, Berlin, and New York, which at this time was part of the Byzantine Empire. So let us now proceed to the Romanesque. Romanesque art, architecture, Sculpture and painting characteristic of the first of two great international artistic eras that flourished in Europe during the Middle Ages. Romanesque architecture emerged about 1000 and lasted until about 1150, by which time it had evolved into Gothic. The Romanesque was at its height between 1,075 and 1,125 in France, Italy, Britain, and the German lands. The name Romanesque refers to the fusion of Roman, Carolingian, and Ottonian, Byzantine and local Germanic traditions that make up the mature style. Genus Two-headed genus who sees forward and backward a personification of the month of January. Romanesque high-relief stone sculpture in the Museo del Domo Ferrara, Italy. And over here is a panel with Byzantine ivory carving of the crucifixion. Now that we are done with the discussion about Romanesque art, let us now proceed to the Gothic art. Gothic art, the painting, sculpture, and architecture characteristic of the second of two great international eras that flourished in Western and Central Europe during the Middle Ages. Gothic art evolved from Romanesque art and lasted from the mid-12th century to as late as the end of the 16th century in some areas. The term Gothic was coined by classicizing Italian writers of the Renaissance, who attributed the invention of medieval architecture to the barbarian Gothic tribes that had destroyed the Roman Empire and its classical culture in the 5th century CE. Examples of Gothic art include Charter Cathedral, France. Amiens Cathedral, the revolted ceiling of Amiens Cathedral, France. And lastly, Basilica of Saint Denis, France. Now, let's move to the famous examples of prehistoric art. These pieces of prehistoric art history were created before written languages had been developed yet. So the chances of us discovering a signature or name seem rather slim to none. First, we have here Blombus Cave. Blombus Cave is situated 300 kilometers from Cape Town to the Blombus Private Nature Reserve and is considered an extremely important archaeological site. It is here the archaeologists 
found what is now thought to be the oldest known drawing created by human hands and is estimated to be about 73,000 years old based on surrounding deposits. Very little is known about humans from this period. So it comes as a surprise to researchers that humans from this time would display an ability to create works of art. Ochre stone found at the Blombos cave site. The pattern dates from approximately 70,000 years ago. Another famous example of prehistoric art is the Venus of Willendorf. The Venus of Willendorf was discovered in 1908 at the site of Willendorf in Austria by digger Johann Veron during excavations. It has been carved out of oolitic limestone not found in its native region and slightly tinted in pigment made of red ochre. Some believe it was created as some kind of goddess symbol of fertility, a charm that brings one good luck, or even possibly a talisman designed as an aphrodisiac. The figure consists mostly of a female torso and breast, with the arms present, but not anatomically represented. They seemed understated and shrunk. There is a head visible, but one does not show any features except a stylized pattern, perhaps meant to represent braided hair or some kind of head cap. The feet also seem to be missing or were perhaps not ever part of the initial design to begin with. It is believed to be a fertility statue as the body parts associated with reproduction seems to be disproportionately exaggerated. Next, we have here Lubang Jerihi Sale. Borneo Island is home to a limestone complex of caves known as the Lubang Jerihi Sale. At around 40,000 years old, it is thought to be one of the oldest figurative paintings known to the world. Located in the East Kalimantan Mountains, this series of caves are covered in images of hands that had been made visible through applying flashes of bright orange ochre and iron oxide paint to the walls, spraying the colors over the hand and leaving an outline of it amongst the burst of colors on cave walls. These hand outlines had been dated to have been created around 52,000 years ago. It is among these paintings that we also find the bull, thought to be the first figurative painting created by human hands, approximately 40,000 years ago. The illustrated bovine stretches over a rocky canvas measuring more than 5 feet in length and has been applied to the limestone walls using red ochre paint. And here is the representation of a wild bovid, the banting, made in ochre, discovered in the Lubang Jerihi Sale Cave. East Kalimantan, Borneo, Indonesia. Lascaux Cave Paintings The Vizier Valley is home to many famously decorated caves that were first discovered in the early days of the 20th century. Amongst them, one of the most well-known would be the Lascaux Cave Paintings. Reowned for its Paleolithic Air Cave Paintings, the caves are situated in Dordogne, a region of southwestern France. They are most highly revered for the complexity of design, outstanding quality of production, age, and sheer scale. The paintings are estimated to be in the region of 20,000 years of age. Second, we have the Chevette Pont d'Arc Cave. 
Archaeologists have concluded that the figurative cave paintings in the Chevette Cave are some of the most well-preserved examples of prehistoric art around the globe. The cave is situated on a cliff made from limestone in Aldich, southeast France, and was first discovered on the 18th of December 1994. It is considered by many art historians and archaeologists to be an extremely important prehistoric site with UNESCO granting the cave's World Heritage status in 2014. Last, we have Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe is situated in southeastern Anatolia in Turkey and is considered by historians to be a site of significance for human civilization and the development of culture and art. Gobekli Tepe was formed by one settlement built upon another settlement in the same place over time. The debris and remnants from the former settlements stacking up over the decades to create a mound that exceeds 15 meters in height and around 300 meters in diameter. The multi-layered complex has been carbon dated to around 9559 BCE and it is said to contain the oldest stone structures bearing artwork engraved upon it. The most common motifs were the depiction of various animals such as boars, bulls, foxes, and lions. Only a few examples of imaginary depicting the human figure have been found at this particular site, a notable exception being the relief of a naked female crouching down on the ground. Prehistoric art reveals the everyday lives of early humans. For example, Many of the images painted on the cave walls were of different animals, such as horse, bison, hyenas, wolves, and deer. This shows that these early people valued these creatures. Without these animals, early people would not have been able to survive. The Venus figurines also suggests that these early people may have had spiritual beliefs and rituals. It is possible that these figurines, which accentuate female anatomy, were created with the hope that they would help increase fertility. Art is a tradition that connects us and encourages us to look beyond reality. Prehistoric art, in particular, is very important because it gives us insight into the development of the human mind and ways. Evidence of artistic thinking in hominids dates back 290,000 years ago, the Paleolithic Age. From holes in the wall to elaborate frescoes, art shows us that there was more to our prehistoric ancestor than Neanderthalic behavior. Ancient Art Grade 9 Activity Assignment Paint Me on the Rock Guidelines You will make a rock painting as it was found in the cave, wall, cliff, or boulder made by the primitive people. You have the decision to paint whatever you want, but make sure that it is inspired from the ancient art based on the topic discussed. You will show your rock painting and share that in our class next meeting. You are not allowed to use any paint brushes in making this task. You are only allowed to use your hands and fingers in your rock painting. Also, use your creativity in making this task. You are also expected to refer to the rubrics provided. In making your rock painting, these are the materials you need to use. And these are the materials you need to prepare. First, your rocks. Second, your newspaper or old papers. Third, and the last is your paint. Activity Project for Grade 9 Ancient Art 
So here are a video of the students who are making their ancient art inspired rock painting. In making a rock painting, here are the rubrics that they need to refer to. So first, we have here the creativity and risk taking. So 10 points if student created original work but also too much risk in their assignment to come up with something more original. The piece of art accurately reflects their understanding. 8 points when student created original work but also took some risk with assignment to come up with something more original. The piece of art mostly reflects their understanding. 6 points when student created average original work. The piece of art somewhat reflects their understanding. 4 points if student copied another student or teacher on certain elements but did include a few elements of their own. The piece represents their understanding minimally. Second, we have your craftsmanship. 10 points when rock painting appears to be made with great care. 8 points when rock painting is clean and presentable appears to be made with great care. 6 points when imperfections distract somewhat from the rock painting. 4 points if the work is messy. So now let's proceed to the pillars of this presentation. We have here the members. To begin with, Mary Luis Lopez, the leader, followed by Mariel Nasa, Seth Florentino, Bea Ezanza, Sean Kian Joshua Obsina, and lastly, Adam Kleiser Sano. We didn't came alone with this preparation, and for your reliability to information, here are our references.